I'm Joel Nemdi, also known as Dr. Bones of the medical preparedness website doomandbloom.net and co-author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, The Essential Guide for When Help is Not on the Way. This is not my co-author, this is actually T.D. Bird, my African Grey Parrot. His name stands for That Darn Bird, right? Right. Many consider a nuclear attack an outlandish scenario to which only conspiracy theorists subscribe. Unfortunately, the threat of a nuclear incident, accidental or purposeful, exists, perhaps more than in recent years due to developments in the Korean Peninsula. Atomic weapons can decimate a population from thermal blasts, but it also causes illness and death due to exposure from radiation. Although populated areas have experienced detonations only twice in Japan to end World War II in 1945, nuclear reactor meltdowns and other events have occurred from time to time since then, such as Chernobyl in 1986 and Fukushima in 2011. In an atomic explosion, radiation is just one of the possible causes of casualties. Heat effects and kinetic energy damage will cause many deaths and injuries close to ground zero. Radiation released into the atmosphere, however, can have devastating effects far from the area where the bomb hit. A nuclear event produces something called fallout. Fallout is the particulate matter that's thrown into the air by the explosion. They can travel hundreds if not thousands of miles on the prevailing winds, coating fields, livestock, and people with radioactive material. The higher the fallout goes into the atmosphere, the farther it will travel downwind. This material contains elements that are hazardous if inhaled or ingested, like radioiodine, cesium, and strontium. Even worse, fallout is absorbed by the animals and plants that make up our food supply. In large enough amounts, it can rapidly become life-threatening. Even in small amounts, it is hazardous to your long-term health. A nuclear power plant meltdown is usually less damaging than a nuclear blast, as the radioactive material doesn't make it as high up in the sky as the mushroom cloud from an atomic bomb. The worst effects will be felt by those in the area of the reactors. Lighter particles like radioactive iodine will travel the farthest and are the main concern for those far from the actual explosion or meltdown. The level of exposure depends on the distance that radioactive particles have to travel from the meltdown and the time it took for the radiation to arrive. The medical effects of exposure are collectively known as radiation sickness or acute radiation syndrome. A certain amount of radiation exposure is tolerable over time, but your goal is to shelter your group as much as you possibly can. To accomplish this goal, we should first clarify what the different terms are for measuring the quantities of radiation. Scientists use terms such as RADs, REMS, Sieverts, Becquerels, or Curies when describing the amount of radiation being given off by a source, the, or the total amount of radiation that is actually absorbed by a human or animal, or the chance that a living thing will suffer health damage from exposure. Becquerels and Curies. They're named after scientists who were the first to work with and die from radioactivity. These terms describe the amount of radiation that, say, a hunk of uranium would give off into the environment. RADs, the amount of radiation in the environment that is actually absorbed by a living thing. REMS and Sieverts, the measurement of the risks of health damage from the radiation absorbed. This is somewhat confusing, so for our purposes, let's use RADs. RAD stands for Radiation Absorbed Dose and measures the amount of radiation energy mm -hmm. transferred to some mass of material, typically humans. An acute radiation dose, one received over a very short period of time, is the most likely to cause damage. Let's assume that you absorb about 0.6 RADs per year from natural or household sources. Absorption of 30 to 70 rads, that's a lot more, would be expected to cause some mild headache or nausea within several hours of exposure. Of course, full recovery over time would be expected. Now, if you hit 70 to 150 rads, that causes nausea and vomiting in about a third of patients. Decreased wound healing, increased susceptibility to infection would be observed as well, but full recovery again is expected. Mm -hmm. But once you've absorbed 150 to 300 rads, that's a lot, you can expect moderate nausea and vomiting plus fatigue and weakness in a majority of patients. Infection and or spontaneous bleeding may occur due to a weakened immune system. 
Medical care will be required for many victims, especially those with burns or wounds. Occasional deaths at 300 res, a higher limit of exposure, might be seen. Once you hit 300 to 500, well, you'll see nausea and vomiting, fatigue, weakness in almost everyone, diarrhea, dehydration, loss of appetite, breakdown of skin, and infection will be very common. Hair loss is going to be visible in most over a period of time. At the high end of exposure, you can expect about a 50% death rate of 500 rads. Over 500 rads, well, that causes spontaneous bleeding, fever, stomach and intestinal ulcers, bloody diarrhea, dehydration, low blood pressure infections, and hair loss that you'll see in almost all patients with death rates approaching 100%. The effects related to exposure may occur over time, though. They don't happen the next day, and symptoms are often not immediate. Hair loss, for example, will appear or become apparent at approximately 10 to 14 days. Deaths indeed may occur weeks after the exposure or years down the road from certain cancers. Next time, we'll talk about what to do to protect yourself, including shelters and materials to prevent exposure to radiation, as well as medicines and treatments to deal with radiation sickness. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Say goodbye, TD. No? Eh. Bye. Hey, if you need a solid medical kit for that wilderness hike, hunting trip, or even long-term survival, check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.